Here's a video on rebuilding the power steering pump on a Triumph Stag. So I've got two Stags, as uh, you may be aware, and I always mess around with both of them. Uh, I noticed the power steering um, started getting heavier and heavier. And this pump is actually off my 71. This is my original Stag that I've had for 20 odd years. But as I was messing around with both, I kept swapping them over because I had a power steering issue. So I actually painted it up. I didn't take it apart but I painted it up and it's and now finally it's it's due for a rebuild. So I know a lot of people in the US you can actually buy. I'll, I'll put on my website the name of an exchange unit but with a $10 repair kit they're relatively not too difficult to uh, rebuild. There is one thing that you need to be aware of when you do disassemble it. Um, and, there's, and I'll make sure I document that. Uh, the hardest thing which is which I find is taking the pulley off but if you have an impact wrench you can uh, use an impact wrench and take the pulley off and there is a key uh, on the shaft that's sometimes difficult to take off but I did see some videos uh, that you actually don't need to take the key out if you're careful you can slide the shaft out from the back. So the way you um, undo this is you take the bracket off and I did create a video is there is a little spacer here uh, in this one particular one I lost the spacer and I just filled it up with washers but there is a little spacer and I already created a video for that the ROM um, and Rimmer's catalog shows this spacer at the back but that's not correct so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna undo the bracket and then I'll uh, restart again and there's actually the way it comes out is there's uh, you got to undo this, this, and this uh, nut here, and then you very carefully separate this can from the back. There's an O-ring that's actually around the whole circumference of this that seals, and inside here is the actual valve that people talk about how to change the uh, pressure. So what I'll do is let me uh, at least undo the bolts and then we'll take it to the next step. Okay, got the uh, ends off. Just want to make sure you put this in the right way. The short end goes inside the body. Um, I undid the big valve. It's uh, a one inch socket. Took that off. Now you want to be careful. You can see there's an O-ring on there. And also, there's a valve inside here, so you want to make sure you take this out correctly and the direction. And there should be a valve and a spring, if I'm not mistaken. You pull that out. Sorry about that. Okay, so now to adjust the pressure of these things, if you'll see very carefully, there's a couple of um, shims, washers or shims, whatever you call them. And you can, if you go on Google or YouTube, you can see that people do modify these. They increase the number of shims or reduce it to increase or decrease the pressure. I don't know what. This is a filter, so you want to be careful. Uh, you can't make out. Uh, but there is a filter, so that could be also another issue. Anyway, as I said, this one hasn't been rebuilt in uh, 20 years. I can already see that the O-ring on this is squared off, so it's, it's due for rebuild. Talk about rebuild kits in the US. In the rebuild kit, there's two kits. You can buy one with actually has a shaft that you can replace inside here. Or there's just ones with O-rings. I think the ones with the shaft is about another $10. I'm talking US. Uh, some My previous rebuild, I didn't change a shaft. It didn't really need it. But I'm going to open this up. And then based on uh, if the shaft is worn, then I'll get one kit or I'll get the other. You know, $10 compared to $20 is a is a... A big difference for me. So now uh, you want to get a mallet and take the back cover off. And, and, well, oops, I forgot to do this one. But then you take the back cover off with a mallet, and you'll. Uh, it should, takes a bit of time, but be careful you don't damage it because this, as I said, this is part of a seal. So uh, I'll stop the video and start again. So I'm using a mallet very gently and separating the uh, front from the back so just again with a mallet don't whack it just use a mallet and do it slowly 
Okay, so the cover's off. Uh, be careful, there'll be fluid leaking out of it because you can get all of the fluid out of the thing. Um, this is the back. Now, as I want to point out, there's actually a couple of O-rings here. The seal between the, the case and the bolt holes. So you want to make sure you get the right ones. Uh, a couple of the kits in US, they have multiple O-rings. So you want to make sure you write, put in the correct O-ring. The next thing you do is there's a there's a little ring in there you can see it's actually sort of spring-loaded the way and this cover is uh, also spring-loaded so what you need to do is hold this with some sort of clamp like a G clamp put a little brattle in this hole here it'll compress that spring and then you can sorry about that compress this spring you better pull that out and then this as I said is spring loaded so I want to be super careful and then just remove this I think uh, the last time I did it I think I removed it and it, it it won't fly out but there is spring loaded so just be careful uh, and then again let's do the next bit just quickly as I said here I pushed this thing in this hole here it was able to move this ring a little bit and I'm gonna just get a screwdriver and lift it out so I'll stop again and take another video just quickly I started taking that ring off what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clamp the uh, thing from coming out so next video okay it wasn't that bad actually I didn't it wasn't fly out but as you can see this is off next thing is a ring spring that's that small spring so it's not that big now you definitely want to be careful I was how this comes apart because it has to go back there's a particular piece in there that needs to go in a particular order and it's very it looks symmetrical but it isn't so uh, I'm gonna make notes here and uh, again I'll stop the video but I think this this slides out so again I have to switch off the video So I got this off and as we noticed the way it came out this is the thing that you got to make sure you get right um, there is actually a, an arrow once I get that off and these are the things you sort of move around I don't know if you can see that that smooths and then they generate the fluid and again let's uh, the strip down So you can see two o-rings here these need to come out and then there's a once I get the shaft off there's an actually another seal at the end and uh, I'm having a bit of trouble taking the pulley off but let's see how that goes and then obviously there's another o-ring here so let's continue so I use the uh, Puller to take off the uh, casting pulley. You'll notice there's a woodruff key on the shaft. And I remember the last time I rebuilt my first one, I was never been able to get it off. But you don't really need to. You can actually drift it down, but you've got to be super careful. Um, there's a brass, there's a bush inside there that can be changed. But if you don't have that much play, then there's no point changing that bush, which I feel. Um, but, you know, there's a seal here. I, I, I remember I struggled many, many years ago taking that seal out. It was, it was pretty solid. So, But, you know, I'm going to change it again. And there. But this is more or less what's involved in dismantling a power steering pump again I'm in US repair kits about without that bush that goes in here it's a sleeve that goes in there for about ten dollars uh, sorry about twenty dollars without it it's about ten dollars and you know but now we're shipping everything's double but uh, that is more or less it as I said just a reminder this this piece is very critical to go in the right direction else you're not going to get power relatively easy to rebuild uh, 
you know, if you work on stags, I think you have all these other tools and stuff to uh, do all these bits and pieces. So I think I'll end here. Um, I'm going to put this in my press, push it out, and then I will go ahead and buy a kit and then rebuild it. And then I'll... There's really no point making a, a video on rebuilding it. It's more or less the reverse of uh, putting back together. You will have issues with uh, this because uh, this is spring loaded. People say get a G clamp, clamp it down, put this ring back on there, and uh, um, you'll be all right. Just word of advice on this thing here. We talked about that little hole where you push your little whatever your brattle in make sure that the ring doesn't go on this area you may want to have it at 90 degrees off so that when you remove it next time you, it, uh, you won't have a problem so yeah that's more or less it about dismantling as I said I probably won't make a video on rebuilding I may but again, this is the critical thing you've got to worry about. And that's the second or third time I've repeated that. But pretty easy, straightforward, nothing too difficult with the uh, power steering pump. You can get replacements. Uh, I feel a bit surprising these for the cost that replacements are. You can do it yourself pretty cheaply. So it's not a difficult task. Okay, I admit I got it out. I had to use my... Uh, Sorry about the mess, I uh, just want to let you know I am a messy person. My mother always used to say what a messy person I am. My brother used to say what a messy person I am. I am a messy person. Uh, here in America, 12 ton Harbor Freight Press, it was $100, lifesaver. Um, I uh, destroyed the uh, original jack, taking my differential flanges off. That was a 12 ton press stopped working so someone donated me a, uh, a five ton press which leaks but hey it works for emergencies um, and uh, I use the press to pull it out now since I have it open part as I said there's a kit that you can actually replace that shaft if it needs doing um, mine's okay I, I mean there's not much play in there I've always struggled with uh, getting this seal off. Maybe I need to buy one of those proper seal pullers. That, I remember struggling like nobody's business to pull that one out. Anyway, this is the shaft. Seems okay. Just, you know, just reassemble it. Not too bad. And as I said, you don't need to drift out that little uh, wood rough key because uh, it can come out as long as it's underneath it should be fine first time I had a trouble with uh, trying to get it out it wouldn't come out like nobody's business so yeah um, I think that will conclude my dismantling and, and again ring building is, is, is going to be easy once you got it together but yeah I, is it can, can anyone do it well you know I've got a press I've got tools if you work on your stag, I think, you know, the press is the biggest lifesaver. Uh, um, as I'm getting older, can't don't have physically strength to do a lot of things, so get the right tools also. Invest in an impact wrench. Here's one here. Okay, yes, I'm not using an impact bit on this, but uh, I do have impact bits. This is a, a battery-operated one, works well as you get older. Um, Lifesaver. I also have an air compressor. Massive one there. Got from a friend for pretty cheap. He worked at Sears. And uh, yeah, that's my end of this dismantling video. Okay, it's out actually. It wasn't as difficult as I thought. I just used a pry bar and pulled it out. Probably the original one in there. And it actually, to be honest, it was quite soft. As usual, I'm always cheap and I thought, should I reuse it? But since the kit will come with one, and if this leaks later on, then the whole thing has to come apart again. So I thought, okay, pull it out. But this is actually, the lip is unlike a, seems weird. It probably was changed. I don't know if it's changed or not, but um, 
was in pretty good health. Anyway, so this is, as I said, this is this is the thing that wears out. So this is pretty good in mine, and it doesn't wear if it seems okay. I I would expect if the shaft is worn, then you know, trying to get that out. If you're not don't have the right tools, that can be a pain, and then you know, that would put me off as well because I I don't really have an, a way to get that out unless I drift it out and you know put it in my press or something, but could be a bit of a challenge. So I suppose, you know, if you don't need to do that, then it's an easy rebuild. If it is, hmm, you may have to have it farmed out. Um, but, you know, in the US, you can, I'll, I'll post the part number that you can get uh, for this. Here's some numbers on the can. I was cleaned up the can and it had actually a number AM, stamp AMC on it. Now this is the number of this one. And this is a very common GM pump used on a lot of GMs. It's a Saginaw pump used on a lot of GMs of the period. Uh, another interesting thing is on this is my Mark 1, you'll see that this uh, cap says type A fluid. But as most people who have Triumphs know, this is actually type F. So maybe this was something from the beginning. Anyway, so that concludes my dismantling video. Again, I most probably won't put a video together uh, assembling it. I've already explained ten times what needs, to, what is the critical part to put back together and what direction. But other than that, it's it's not a as difficult job as it seems, especially if you spend fifty pounds, sixty pounds in UK to have one on an exchange. But uh, you know, each to their own.